Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn, and today I thought I would officially announce a new series on Fallout 4 mods. Now, many of you know that I do mod videos all the time. I already have dozens and dozens in my YouTube Fallout 4 mod playlist, but I focus on lore and settlements. Today's video is the first in a new segment called Oxhorn's Mod Muster, which I'll publish twice a week on Mondays and Fridays, and continuing to do lore and sometimes settlements the rest of the week. In this series, I'm going to focus on the best mods that I think fix Bethesda bugs or Bethesda oversights, make playing the game less cumbersome and more intuitive, improve immersion with better models, textures, or features, or add something new, fun, and interesting to the world of Fallout 4. I'm gonna steer clear of mods that are blatant cheats or mods that are so jarring that they knock you out of the world. Today's episode is a guns and bullets special. I'm gonna focus on a handful of mods that improve the way weapons work in the game. These aren't new guns, they're not player made guns. Instead, these mods just alter and improve the way guns are used and presented in Fallout 4. First up is Lever Action Reload Fix by Shav Kakegarikia. You may have never noticed this before, but if you've ever used the Lever Action Rifle from Far Harbor, every time you reload the weapon, you load five rounds, even if you only shot once. Even if you only shot twice. Every single time you reload, five rounds. It's just jarring, unnecessary, wastes time, and is really annoying. Especially when you're stuck in combat reloading your lever action rifle, being fired upon by enemies. Shav Kakagarikia's mod makes it so that you only reload the missing ammunition. The max rounds in the chamber are five. If you have four rounds in the chamber, you only load one. If you have three, you load two. If you have two, you load three. And if you have one, you load four. Makes sense, right? A lovely mod that fixes a little bit of Bethesda oversight and makes Fallout 4 a bit more enjoyable for those of us who use the lever action rifle. Thank you, Shav Kakagarikia. Next up is Crimson Rider's Scrounger Perk with DLC Ammo by Crimson Rider. This is another one that fixes some Bethesda oversight. When you install Far Harbor, you gain access to the new lever action rifle and the harpoon gun. When you install Nuka World, you gain access to the handmade assault rifle. All of these guns have unique ammunition, but that ammunition only drops in those respective zones. You can only get lever action and harpoon weapon ammunition at Far Harbor. You can only get handmade rifle ammunition in Nuka World. This doesn't make any sense considering that you find Nuka World raiders roaming through downtown Boston after you install the DLC. With this mod, Crimson Rider simply added the DLC ammunition to the loot tables in Vanilla Fallout 4. Here I am in Gunner's Plaza, and as you can see, I stumbled upon the lever rifle ammunition. And here I am, I stumbled upon the handmade rifle ammunition. You don't get more DLC weapon ammunition than vanilla weapon ammunition, you get an equal chance. Every time you loot a container, you have a chance of looting ammunition from any of these guns in the game. It just makes sense and it works. Thank you, Crimson Rider. Next up is Gun Smoke, Weapon Muzzle Smoke and Smoke Trails by Mod Club. This is a fun mod that causes your gun to emit realistic looking gun smoke every time you fire a round. It includes new muzzle blasts that cast shadows and different smoke thicknesses depending on the type of gun that you use. I'll go through a handful of different guns to show you how the smoke works. Here's the pipe pistol before and after. combat rifle before and after. And then here's the lever action rifle before and after. I did this test on a foggy day. As you can see, the smoke fits right in with the world. But just so that you get a clearer picture, let me clear the skies and give you a darker background so that you can see the smoke a little better. Here is each weapon again.
Now the shadows cast by the muzzle flash can really bog down your system, especially if you're encountering a lot of enemies with automatic weapons. That's a whole lot of muzzle flashes and a whole lot of shadows cast. At least on my machine, rendering shadows is one of the greatest reasons for my frames per second to tank. Thankfully, the mod author provided a solution for that. He included a version where the muzzle flashes do not cast shadows. So for those of you who are concerned about FPS and you don't want this mod to impact your frame rate, he has a solution for you. Thank you, Mod Club. Now we just tested a whole bunch of guns. You'd think there'd be ammo casings on the ground, but no, the ground is completely clean. There's no evidence that we've even been here. That's not realistic. Thankfully, mod author Paul Derrick comes to the rescue with his mod called Shell Rain. This simple mod increases the visibility duration of shell casings in the game. The default visibility duration for shell casings is five seconds. That is, after you fire a round, the casing will sit on the ground for five seconds before it fades from the world. Five seconds is barely enough time to even see it, especially if you're playing in first person. This mod changes it to 10 minutes. Now shell casings will exist in the world for 10 minutes before disappearing. It also increases the radius where you can see shells on the ground. This means that now you'll find the shell casings from enemies as well as your own. And it increases the number of shell casings that you can find in any given scene. The default is 25, and this changes it to 1500. Let me show you what this looks like for a variety of different guns. Now you may be worried about FPS with something like this, but as you can see in my game, with a field of view of 100, which means I'm loading more things into the scene, and with a lot of high resolution textures, I still have a really killer frame rate. If I look up at the city, my frames go down. That's because I'm in downtown Boston and I'm trying to load an entire city in my screen. But when I look down at the ground where all I'm seeing are the shell casings, my FPS go all the way back up. So from my experimentation, this mod does not negatively affect frame rates at all. This is a wonderful little mod. Thank you very much, Paul Derrick. Now, Paul Derrick has another companion mod to this called Visual Reload, which does the same thing as this one does, except for magazines. Now, when you throw a magazine on the ground, it persists in the world for a period of time. That said, I couldn't actually get it to work in my game. I probably spent two hours changing load orders, using console commands, going to interior cells and exterior cells, trying to get this mod to work, and I couldn't get it to work. So I sadly can't review it here, but reading the comments on that mod page, there are many people who can get it to work, so I'm going to link to it in the description of this video in case you'd like to try it out. So have you ever noticed that the Institute pistol or rifle is really large? In first person view, it takes up nearly a third of the whole screen. Here I am with a field of view of 100, which is fairly common on the PC, and yet if I were to try and actually use this in combat, I'd miss half the battle. Thankfully, two modders named Akir4 and War Daddy have fixed this problem with their mod, Laser Weapons First Person Reposition. This mod repositions the first person view of both the Institute rifle and the laser rifle. The problem was obnoxiously blatant with the Institute rifle, but it still also exists with the regular laser rifle. The mod works by altering the skeleton of the player to hold the gun in a different way. This gives us a different view of the weapon, freeing up more of the screen. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the Institute rifle before the mod is installed and after. What a difference, right? Here's the pistol before and after. The laser rifle before and after. And the laser pistol before and after. Looks kind of like that one really didn't need to be fixed, but all of the other ones did. Simply put, 
the mod alters the way that the player holds the weapon to be more in line with the way that the player holds ballistic weapons. It makes sense for a missile launcher or a fat man to take up a third of the screen, but the Institute rifle? Not so much. Thank you, Akira 4 and War Daddy, for your wonderful fix. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite mods called Just Visible Holstered Weapons by Friffy. Now, this mod doesn't actually alter any weapons in the game. Have you ever thought that it's rather strange to pull your weapon out from thin air? What, do you have a chest cavity like Bender from Futurama that acts like a black hole that can hold the universe? No, of course not, that's ridiculous. Where are we holding our weapons? This mod creates a new category of armor pieces that look like weapons. These armor pieces don't have any stats, they don't have any weight, but you can equip them from the armor tab of your Pip-Boy and your character will look like he or she is wearing a holstered weapon. The way it works is you can go to the chemistry station, scroll all the way down past utilities until you find visible weapons. Here you can find nearly every single weapon in the game, including DLC weapons and including melee weapons. Friffy has some of these weapons in a number of different ways. Pistols with different mods to make them larger or smaller, weapons held on the hip or on the side, and then all you have to do is craft the item and then it appears in your inventory. Once crafted, open up the armor tab of your Pip-Boy and you can scroll through the armor pieces you've made to equip them. As I said earlier, they equip like armor pieces, but they don't actually have any stats. They're not real armor pieces. And what's nice about them is that they take up different slots than other armor pieces that you have in the game. This means that if you equip one of these visible weapons, it will not unequip anything that you currently have equipped. The exception might be if you have other mods installed that create armor items that take up the same slots as these visible weapons. My favorite thing about this is that Friffy had the foresight to give different weapon types different slots. For example, I can have a gun holstered on my back and a melee weapon holstered on my hip. In this way, you can have your rifle and the grognax axe, your laser musket and Pikmin's blade, all visible and holstered on your character. The way I do it is I have my lever action rifle holstered on my character's back because my character is the general of the Minutemen, a nice revolutionary sword holstered at the hip. Now these are just simple armor pieces, which means that if you ready your weapon, holding it in front of you, they stay on your character. It doesn't bother me, but it may bother some people to have a weapon holstered on your back and then you actually equip it and it doesn't disappear from your back. If that bothers you, then I recommend a companion mod to this one called Visible Weapons Third Person Holster by Registrator2000. This mod will unequip the visible weapon that you have equipped whenever you take out your weapon. After you install visible weapons, you find in your inventory the visible weapons config in the aid section of your inventory. Using this config, you can make a one-time link between the desired weapon in your inventory and the appropriate weapon model. So in this example, I'm linking my lever action rifle with the lever action rifle on my back. Here I'm going to link the Shem Drow sword with the revolutionary sword on my hip. Now I can switch between the two and when I do, the appropriate weapon is sheathed and unsheathed, holstered and unholstered. Beautiful! A simple step that makes my Fallout 4 gameplay so much more fun. Thank you very much, Friffy and Registrator2000. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first episode of Oxhorn Mod Muster. Guns and Bullets Special. If you want any of the mods that I talk about in this video, I link to them in the description below. I'm a PC player, so all of the mods I talk about here are available on the PC. Some of them may be available on consoles, and I encourage you to do some investigation to see if you can find them on the console of your choice. What do you think of this new series? Are you looking forward to it? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. And did you know that I recently came out with a new line of Oxhorn t-shirts? That's right, many of them are even Fallout 4 themed. 
So if you're looking for a new t-shirt, you can find a link to my Teespring store in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.